everyone, I'm Noe but you can also call me Sebi. In this video, I'll be giving tips and tricks on how to design the fashion for your fantasy theme character using Clip Studio Paint. Yep, our main tool will be Clip Studio Paint. I started using Clip Studio 2 years ago and I've been using it ever since. It's a great software with lots of features. If you've never used it, I recommend, <laughs> I recommend you checking it out. Link in the description box below. Oh, and also, I've posted a written version of this video tutorial on the Clip Studio Tips site. Some of the examples shown are different there, and if you want to read it, links also in the description box below. Okay, then let's start. If you guys have been following me for a while, you should know that I love the fantasy genre and I love designing OC, original characters. Put those two together and bam, you get fantasy characters. The thing I love about fantasy fashion is how unrestricted they are. You are free to be extra with the accessories and decorations. Um, you can make your character wear frills and merge historical and modern fashion without people questioning about it. So, first thing first, before we get to designing, we need to start with the concept. What kind of fantasy design are you going for? Will it be a modern fantasy? Historical? Futuristic? And how about the character you are fashioning? What are their concepts? Are they a noble? Um, a commoner? The cute type? The fierce type? And so on. Once you've decided on the concept, we need to have the model. Draw the full body figure of your model. You can immediately draw their body. If not, draw the sky figures first like what I do and draw the model after. If you have trouble drawing full body anatomy on your own, you can use the 3D model provided by Clip Studio Paint. If you look near the navigation window, there's a double arrow. Click on that and it should open this window. Scroll down until you see the 3D button. Click on it and then you should see the pose, body pose. That's the model that you can use. See, you have the model and you have the poses. And we're gonna go back to the model, select one, and just click and drag it onto the canvas. Uh, unfortunately, my laptop freezes when I try to load the 3D models while recording, so I can't open the 3D models now. But here's what I've done before. You load the model and you can just immediately design the outfit on top of the 3D model but if you wanted to keep it 2D, you load the model and then you set the pose and you trace over it. You draw your character over the 3D model. But actually, personally, I prefer to draw them in chibi form because chibi form is faster and smaller to draw in case you wanted to draw a lot of them, it's much faster and if you're worried about the design not showing because they're small, the chibi is only as temporary placeholder when you want to design a lot and quick. So later on, once you've decided on a design, you can just redraw the entire thing again in its normal form and draw the accessories in more detail. Next, getting into designing. There are three things that you need to take note of first. First, you need to remember that you're designing the clothes for your character, so it needs to complement their body type, fits their personality, and make sure it looks good on them. Secondly, there are various types of fabric. Knowing about the different types of fabric create variety in your design. Lastly, when drawing the design, you should try to keep the outfit as well fitted to the character's body as possible. If not, it would look sloppy. Now, how do you design them? Tip 1. Mix and match. When designing for fantasy characters, don't be afraid to go all out. They are in a fantasy universe, so it's alright if they're wearing one too many layers of clothing or including that normally wouldn't be worn together or merging pre-existing design altogether. Let me show you um, using my characters as example. Here you can see she wears a bikini top, a pair of shorts with suspenders, an oversized sailor uniform, 
uh, which falls down her shoulders and there's a ribbon loop holding it from falling and I gave her a pair of tie-high socks and simple sneakers to finish the loop and for this one here I merged the style of high collar windbreaker but I cut off the sleeve I separated the sleeve and I gave him an overall East Asian look influence ish you can see from the kimono sleeve and also the buttons and to add to the look I also gave him a short blusher veil so these are only some of the examples when it comes to mix and matching just try out anything that you think will fit it's okay it's fantasy world just make sure it looks good on them <laughs> tip 2 reconstructing pre-existing design there are two easy ways how you can reconstruct pre-existing design first one is by cutting out parts from clothes like um do you guys remember the um the virgin killer sweater it's basically a sweater with a large hole at the back so yeah with that concept you can also just cut out parts from clothes to make it more interesting usually it be either the chest the shoulders the forearms side of torso and the back the second way is by changing the shape what i meant by this is like changing parts of clothes from something practical and normal to something more aesthetic for example replacing normal sleeves with wings using bat wing shape ribbon instead of normal ribbon and creating skirt out of liquid instead of normal fabric tip 3 customize and accessorize i think this is the most important part of fashioning fantasy character because they always seem to have a useless number of decorations and accessories on them like have you guys seen the number of zippers on the Kingdom Hearts character? And yes, they look really good. Anyway, in this section we'll be focusing on how to use the tools and features in Clip Studio Paint to customize and accessorize your fashion design. First up, adding folds and frills. Adding folds is easy, you just have to draw lines on the design. By the way, these lines are not vertical stripes, they are folds and they are meant to make the outfit look bouncier, more flowy. Then there's the frills. If you're not used to drawing frills, you'll find it difficult to draw them at first, but it's pretty simple once you've gotten the hang of it. Basically, frills are fabric that you fold repeatedly and you either stitch it on top or in the middle. When drawing them, the edge of the fabric will look like a looping zigzag. Also, you need to note that the inside part of the frills are barely visible. That is, if the frills are closely sewn to each other. When you do this, the frills will appear bouncy. If, however, your frills are sewn loosely, the inside part will be visible and the frills will not appear as bouncy as before. There's a trick to create frills faster using Clip Studio. If you look at the toolbar on the left, there is a tool called Decoration. This tool allows you to stamp and brush pre-made shapes onto your artwork. If you look under the clothing section, there is already a decoration called Simple Frills provided by Clip Studio. Simply select this and brush it over your dress and voila! quick and easy frill. Next up, we'll be customizing the edges. Normally, clothes have straight edges, but not all of them do. Some have rounded or spiky curve. You can draw this manually, but if you want to do it faster and more consistent, go to the decoration tool and select ruled line where you'll see a variety of pre-made lines. Just like the frills, select the one you want and brush it over on your design. Another method that you can use is via the vector tool. If you look here, there's a button called new vector layer. Let me show you how it works. When you draw something on the normal layer and then you select the correct line tool, nothing happens. But if you draw on the vector layer, the one with the cube icon, 
and then you select the correct line tool see you can actually edit the lines afterwards so for our fashion design if you draw it on the vector layer you can edit the outlines however and whenever you want then we have patterns I'm going to show you three methods how you can add patterns to your fashion design. Firstly, you can draw the patterns manually. This is slow, tedious and difficult if you don't know the technique. But you get to adjust the arrangement to your liking and it feels more authentic. Secondly, you can use the decoration tool. Anything in there can be a pattern. Just choose whichever decoration you want and brush it all over your design according to your preference. Lastly, you can design the pattern yourself and have it registered. That way you can reuse it at any time. You can design the pattern manually or... Let me show you this cool trick. You go to the toolbar and select the ruler tool. Then select the symmetrical ruler. This ruler will mirror whatever you draw on one side. Check the ruler setting and set the number of lines to your liking. I will use 7 lines for this video. Then that, then click on the canvas to place the ruler. Select a drawing tool of your liking and start messing around until you are satisfied with the design. Once you're done, we'll go register the design. But before that, right click on the ruler icon on the patterns layer and click delete ruler. If you don't do this, the pattern will be registered as ruler instead later. Okay, now that's done, click on the double arrow on top right to expand the material window and head to the pattern section. Now all you gotta do is drag and drop the layer with the design into this window and you're done. If you double click on the design, a window will pop up and you can edit the setting on how you want the design to appear later. You can have it tall, horizontal, vertical, etc. And don't worry, you can go back and edit the setting anytime you want. So how do you use it? Just drag and drop the design onto your canvas and adjust it accordingly. Then, Lastly, adding accessories. Like I've said, fantasy characters usually wear a lot of accessories. I can't say much on how to place them. It depends on your sense and preference really. So, how do you draw them? Some accessories with geometric shapes are hard to get right when you want to draw them. That's why we'll be using the figure tool. There's a lot of shapes with settings that you can personalize here. Say you want to draw an orb. Just use the ellipse shape and draw on extra bits on it. Put on some colors and voila. To create a cube, piece two squares and some lines together and you get a cube. If you're afraid the shapes are uneven, select the view button on the taskbar above and click on grid to enable grid view. You can now use the grid as your guide. In case you don't want the grid anymore, click on view on the taskbar again and we click on the grid to disable it. For the last part of this section, I'll be showing you the trick if you want to do crisscross lacing or design. If you do the crisscrossing on your own, sometimes it might end up uneven. So the trick is, use the symmetrical ruler. Uh, make sure the lines is set to 2 and just draw on one side. And you can even, <laughs> of course you just draw on one side. <laughs> and you can even do this cool loop design using the symmetrical ruler. Once you're done with drawing the design, let's move on to the coloring. When you want to experiment and see the design in various color, my trick is to color the design first, make sure you color different parts on different layer, and then you put all those layers into one folder. Then you create a parent folder where you put the line arts and the folder with the colors in it. Uh, once everything is in that main folder, that parent folder, right click and choose duplicate layer. It will then duplicate the entire folder. Select the, cop uh, select the copy and drag the design to the side. To change the color, simply go to Edit, select Tonal Correction and choose Hue, Saturation, Luminosity or you can just press Ctrl U on your keyboard. 
play around with it until you're satisfied. Repeat this step for the other layers as well if you want to change their colors. If you want, you can also use the fill or bucket tool to manually change the color but it's pretty slow and not very accurate. In case you want to add more flair to the colors, I have some color tips for you. Color tip 1. Blending modes. If you don't know what blending modes are, it's this drop down menu here with lots of options. It's sort of like a filter color effect. I usually use between multiply, overlay and add glow in fashion design. I will be demonstrating those three. First off, to use the blending modes, create a new layer on top of a colored layer. I'm gonna go with this layer and then you clip it. You clip the top layer so whatever you draw on the top layer won't go out of what's on the bottom layer. Choose the blending mode. Uh, I'm gonna go with multiply first. It'll make a darker color effect. Then select the brush of your choice. I really prefer airbrush to do this. See? Even when my selected color is baby blue, when I airbrush it on the multiply layer, the dress becomes dark. That's how blending modes work. Now I'm gonna use overlay. Overlay will overlay the color. Dark becomes darker and light becomes lighter. I love this effect so much. Lastly, there's the add glow. It's really useful when you wanna add sparkles to your design. Color tip 2. Using gradient tool. If you notice, there's this tool called the gradient tool. If you check it out, you'll see that there is a wide variation of gradient that you can choose from. This tool allows you to quickly add gradient to your design. You are free to customize the colors in the tool setting. And you have the power to control the direction of the gradient. Select a gradient type, go to your design, and drag the mouse. The gradient will appear according to the direction and length that you drag. It's really cool! Try it out! Color Tip 3 Coloring See-Through Fabric Lastly, I'm going to share some tips on how to color see-through fabric. For example, I have this character here who wears a veil but how do I make it see-through? There are two ways. First off, color the fabric normally. Then what you want to do is lower down the opacity using the opacity slider on the top right of the layer window. That's it! Second method is you can use multiply or darken from the blending mode menu which will make the color darken and see through for all the other layers below it. However, multiply or darken only works if the fabric is not white. If it's white, it will just disappear because white cannot darken over other colors. That was a long tutorial. If you had stayed with me until the end, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed the video and gained something from it. If you like it, drop a comment or give the video a like. I'm not very active on social media, but if you want to see more of my drawings, check out my Instagram at noepion. Links in the description box. Thank you again for watching. Stay safe. Take care. Bye-bye.